Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Doug Fine, and I am the principal of Defined Performance Solutions. And here today I have Ray DeMay from Seattle. You're up in Seattle, Ray, huh? I am, absolutely. The beautiful Pacific Northwest. All right. When it's not raining, I had to say that. You know, it doesn't rain here as much as it does Miami, so... <gasps> Okay, there. that problem is solved. <laughs> so, uh, Ray, thank you for joining me today. We're going to have a great uh, rapid fire discussion here. And I want to let our viewers and listeners know a little bit about you. So I'm going to plug these in and go. Fantastic. Ray has spent her 20 plus year professional career bringing an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial spirit for building capacity and unleashing engagement in diverse and global organizational positions, populations. Ray sees the best pop possible future state, draws this vision out in any team or group, and helps them unlock the path to living that outcome. Ray holds a master's in organizational and leadership development. She's demonstrated her expertise and knowledge of business, employee experience, slash EX, learning and development, coaching, and facilitation practices throughout her wide-ranging career, from launching a one-of-a-kind mobile computer lab, providing technology access and skills to marginalized youth throughout King County, Washington, to leading OD and change management efforts for a global travel organization, reimagining employee-focused programs. Ray's looking forward to launching Ray of Hope Collective. That will be a boutique consulting service practice in the very near future. Initial offerings will include master third party facilitation services, strategic people planning roadmaps, enhancing current organizational strategic plans and execution, change management initiatives, consulting and workshops, she will be helping uh, organizations design events and planning for any stakeholder seeking to maximize system-wide innovation and participative co-creation. Ray's current passion project is co-founding a social organization focused on the nexus, not nexus of EX transformation, employee experience transformation, where an inclusive community collectively traverses the spaces of people operations. UX, what does that stand for? User experience. User experience, EX, employee experience, business, data, and HR. Getting all those people together is gonna to be quite something. Yes, and transformational too. Yes, and she intentionally brings together inv individuals and organizations seeking to shape the new future of work reality embedding heart human at the forefront of processes and procedures and i can get on board with that ray so again welcome wonderful thank we're you so for glad you're me. here so this is the rapid fire version of our interview and this is the defined engagement podcast and uh let's start with number one who do you work best with and who are your ideal clients who I work best with are those who are aware that they're really in a place where they need to focus on how they actually bring people and people strategy forward in their business to therefore maximize their business strategic plans, their outcomes and their goals. So I work with individuals to groups and departments up to and including the C-suite okay. and um, multiple industries. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, also focusing on uh, various uh, iterations of business, whether it's startup, nonprofit, government, or enterprise. I'm open to working with any of those kind of clients. Wonderful. So you have a wide array of skills. Plus, um, do you have a favorite industry that you like to go into or you know most about? Uh, you know, I've done a tremendous amount of work with uh, both hospitality focused organizations, um, but I also really love working with any group that's in, in a transformational state. Okay. Um, or one of my specialties too is actually being able to take groups that are really feeling boxed in by a tremendous amount of regulatory compliance mm -hmm. issues and helping them actually see where their innovation and where their uh, what possible best future exists. Wonderful. So what is the problem that you help your clients solve? And I'm sure it's a myriad. It 
It is. But um, what 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 do you what would you say is the primary thing you think you can bring to a company? When it boils down to uh, one statement, it really goes into designing and aligning their human focus, people strategy to their business strategy. Okay. So many many organizations. Uh, they have crystal clear ideas what their business strategy is, what their what mm -hmm. their intentions are, and yet mapping out and identifying how you actually embolden and enable your teams and your people to actually reach those goals is a huge area of opportunity. And then the other piece is, is how do you actually allow for and embrace the people to actually inform what the strategic plan is as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. I, I want to go in into more of that too, because and but let me just say it now because it just seems like that's what businesses tend to just focus on. It's just the operations. It's what we're going to produce. It's what we're going to do. It's what we're going to do. And and there's very little thought, even at the front end of all this planning and strategy, even at the thought of what people, how people need to be prepared to partner with them to do it to make the goal to, to get them because the people are there to do it and if they're not factoring in all kinds of things related to people and and your culture that you're building it's, it's more than likely you're not going to get to the goal so that's a beautiful thing that you're doing well thank you yeah. and you're absolutely true doug is, is that there's there's just a gap in the thought process traditionally that all the answers need to come somewhere from the top um, oh. or from the board of directors. And the truth of the matter is, is when you actually take it down to every level within the organization and actually invite every department, every team to have some sort of contribution and visibility what you're planning on, you can start to uncover all of the uh, unintended consequences, all yes. of the challenges, all of those hiccups that cost millions and millions of dollars potentially down the line once you actually get to the oops you can actually be very proactive instead of reactive when you bring people into the design from the very beginning. Wonderful. And you can actually, amazingly, when you invite others, you can actually have an outcome that's far greater than what any one small group or individual could ever imagine for themselves. We're in sync there. What is a common mistake that people make or companies make when they try to solve that problem? And then I'm going to say they try to solve it without Ray. <laughs> uh, indeed. And this is something that uh, organizations have been fighting and being and felt perplexed about for decades. And uh, in my studies and my research and my um, um, really long term evaluation on this is it comes down to organizations wanting to apply what's called a technical solution mm. or technical fix to the adaptive challenge. And so uh, there's some amazing research out there, but really it boils down to, so imagine if we need to create a way for people to protect their feet in a whole different way outside of shoes, as we know shoes. Mm -hmm. The technical fix or the technical solution is let's just teach you to tie your shoes differently, or let's give you a new fastener for your shoes. When in reality, we need to design something completely different that changes the way we regard footwear, the way that we see footwear, the way that we engage in footwear, and then the way that we value it and then actually utilize it. And that's the adaptive challenge side, the human psychology side of change or ad adaptation. Gotcha. Human psychology side, side to change. Excellent. What's something that the audience can implement today that will make a difference. And I'm going to remind you who our audience is. It's yes, leaders. It's people in the engagement space. It's in the leadership development space. It's in the employment and employee culture space. And, and anybody else that wants to watch this. But what would, you, what would you give free advice about? Well, first, I've already kind of touched on it a little bit, which is invite representatives from your entire system from start to the sustainable evaluation mm -hmm. process. Uh, into your conversations and into your dialogues around what you're trying to work towards. Um, to add on to that, I'm also going to highly recommend, there's two different kind of modalities out there, but one that I call the other AI, mm -hmm. which is appreciative inquiry. Ah. Um, 
and then the, another modality that marries quite, very lovely with that is uh, the theory you. And that is if you start to actually imagine what your best possible future state is first. Mm -hmm. Imagine it vividly as if it's real, if it's as if. Mm-hmm. What do you see? What do you hear? What's it feel like? What's it smell like? Music, dance, whatever the the impressions may come. Invite everyone to imagine that most best possible future state. And that's actually going to help you shift out of actually one of my biggest areas of opportunity as well is from problem solving, which keeps you stuck in the box that you've always been in, to where's the opportunity. Mm-hmm. So, whole new realm of possibilities, excitement, as well as being drawn to that North Star uh, for those of us who are in the Northern Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. (laughs) And guide us to where we want to go ultimately. Super. From all your experience, what's the most valuable free tip you can give? It's kind of like the last question, but is there anything else you'd like to say about giving our audience something, a a, a piece of your mind or words of wisdom? Um, Well, when it comes to working with people and bringing in your people strategy and marrying it to your business strategy, one thing, and it goes back to the adaptive challenge concept, is there is no such thing as a one-size-fits-all magic bullet, add water, and it's magically going to grow solution or approach. Uh, So if you um, are frustrated, whether you're an individual contributor or a leader or a C-suite person, but because you've brought in solutions to your business before um, or you've tried to create them from within internally and they haven't taken, they haven't actually uh, stuck, uh, I really would recommend that you look into what what was the intention behind the project. Mm-hmm. Designed to be uniquely catered and actually um, curated to your needs, your organizational needs, and then did you actually put a reasonable timeline on it and mm-hmm. time frame? Mm-hmm. These sorts of things, it's, it's a long-term process and it's hard work. It is not something that we can magic, wave a magic wand on and have it completed and fixed overnight. Um, so watch out for the flavor of the month and the lipstick on the pig, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, which demoralizes everyone. It, it wastes so many resources, both time, money, and effort, and it becomes a very vicious cycle. So bringing somebody like me in who can help you actually really plan and articulate and bring forward the, the gifts that sit within your organization and, and how to actually maximize your people that's my most valuable tip. That's your sweet spot. Yeah, you know, what, what you just said about the gifts that you have in your people, that's a concept that is twice or three times or four times removed in, in most C-suites. The, 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 you know, the, the people are the biggest cost kind of thing. And not everybody. Everybody knows you can't do your work without people, but sometimes the way they're treated within a company, it, it they're they're demonstrating that they don't see them as gifts. Yes, and and certainly most every organization will have somewhere in their mission statement that people are their most valuable asset. Um, <laughs> and that's I guess where I would also really encourage uh, that self reflection is is what does that mean and how are you united mm-hmm. on that term asset? What does that mean? And power of words. So the use mm-hmm. of asset. Mm. What does that energetically create for yourself as leaders, C-suite, board of directors, individual contributors, et cetera? What does asset really start to energetically create in your environment? And how does that impact your viewing of inclusion and involving your, your entire people into what your plans are? Yeah. See, I was, I was think I thought you were going like, let's just get word of the asset. Let's get rid of that word when we're talking about people. But I, that's not what you're saying. It's like how you have lots of assets and you value them. And, and you have to do the same with your human assets. You do. And, and I would say that there may be a choice for some organizations that removing asset is the right choice. Yes, yes. So much a perceived um, concept behind it and construct behind it that it just doesn't actually play into um, enhancing and lifting the value that the organization has. Um, and at the same time, it may actually be very well worth the organization holding on to that term. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the key there is, is actually getting unified agreement to what words mean. Mm -hmm. And that's another place where value statements and mission statements, I think, fail is because, again, they tend to be made and created in a vacuum somewhere out there and they created it, not we. And so, therefore, uh, the words and the terms that are used generally aren't something that the whole agrees to and comes to a unified um, set point on, which then also helps create that navigation place. So when you say that you have integrity, uh, that's a word that means so many different things for so many different people. The assumption is everybody is operating with the same belief of what integrity means. And then when you see it playing out in so many different ways across the organization, it creates a tremendous amount of frustration because we're clear on what integrity is, yet we never actually got true unified clarity of what it means for us as an organization and how we're going to embody it and move those behaviors forward. Wow. I just, just in listening to you, Ray, I just um, see so much value that you add to your clients and, and just by what you know, what you believe and and what you can do for them so i want to know how can people learn more about you and your work and do you have anything a resource you could point our listeners to absolutely so right now um easiest way to find me is on linkedin mm -hmm. uh, my profile is up under ray dumay uh, and uh, I have some resources that are posted both under my job experiences as well as an article that I've written. I've got some other things in the works where you can see actual samples of what I do and how I've worked through things from grad school on up to current state. Um, also, I'm in the process of launching my website to go with the launch of my business. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's Ray of Hope Co. Dot com and that will soon be published and that'll be another way and get in touch with me very soon uh, as to other resources there's just some amazing resources that I love out there in the world if people are interested in appreciative inquiry mm -hmm. there's actually a global group called appreciative inquiry Commons where you can learn a lot more about the process and, and the model and then another great place that helps people start to understand some of the background of like my foundational thought process which I've kind of touched on today. Sure. And that would be uh, uh, system thinking resources. So donellameadows.org slash system thinking resources. And you can just type in Donella Meadows thinking, uh, systems thinking resources, and you'll get a great page that gives you modalities, authors, um, uh, um, practices, groups that you can participate in and just a great place to start on. on Super. You know what I'm going to do, folks? I'm going to, when I uh, put this interview up onto everywhere it's going to go, definitely on the YouTube page, that stuff will go. Wonderful. All those resources, I want to give you, I want to put those uh, URLs up. The other thing is I'll do that uh, on my website when I load up the podcast so people will know uh, how to get to you and I'll put your a link to your um, your uh, LinkedIn profile that kind of thing too wonderful so re Ray this has been terrific uh, thank you for your time I look forward to keeping in touch we've we've uh, we've developed a friendship across the miles and and uh, every time we talk you're 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 challenging me you're supporting me um, so it's really awesome that we can meet such you know, this is this is what's happening in the world. We get to know people that um, we become friends, even though we've never met each other yet. So, thank yeah. you. Thank you as well, Doug. And I feel the same way. We've got quite a connection, and I love supporting you and being a part of this process. So, thank you for inviting me. You betcha. We'll see you down the road. Okay. Okay. Hi, hey, Doug. Fine again. Thank you so much for watching and tuning into this defined engagement webcast. I'm in Augusta, Georgia, but I can travel anywhere to help your company amp up its engagement and motivate leadership to be just more effective with their people. So don't hesitate to get in touch with me. I can be reached at www.dougjfine.com or email me at doug at dougjfine.com and we'll have a conversation and it could lead to a partnership. 
I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Take care.